All right, guys. You've been asking for a while about comb honey. So let's talk about comb honey. It's about 110 degrees with the heat index, so please bear with me. It's hot. This was the top box. When you're checking your comb honey for progress, check from the bottom. Don't be pulling frames out from the top. You could damage your comb. You can easily check and see what's going on from underneath here. Now, I've come to this box. And this box is ready. So, let's bring you guys closer here. You can see I'm capped all the way to the bottom. It's beautiful and light. It's beautiful combs. So what I got to do is smoke the bees down off this burr comb super here. Oh, that wind feels amazing. Y'all yeah, don't talk about my smoker now. That duct tape works pretty good. I'm pretty rough on them. So, you can put too much smoke on this comb, but this comb is capped, so it's not gonna be a big deal. And we got them on the run now, we can hear them. So what we gotta do is we just don't wanna crush a bunch of bees. We're gonna put this super back. Settle it down right like that. Now I'll take you guys with me here. We got fume board here in the truck and uh, some drip pans. Now, when it's getting time to harvest comb honey, I'm always carrying this with me. Now I have my supers to super up, but I have my drip pans to cover up and set my comb honey supers on and I have my fume boards and my blower. Now, I use these fume boards yesterday to pull honey and they still got a lot of smell on them especially if you stack your fume boards together like this so they still got whew, plenty stink on them so we're going to take this over here and we're going to run these bees out of this comb honey super Now honey prices are up for extracted honey. They're, they're close to $3 a pound in bulk. But still, this shallow super, I'd be lucky if it yielded 25 pounds of extracted honey. So that'd be about $75. But now this super is worth wholesale prices, $350. Now when you set your fume board on, I like to give it a little bit of a cock one way or the other so the bees can get away from it. Then I like to tilt it up and smoke it good under it. And you can come back and square it up later. So we're waiting on this one. Let's see what is going on in this hive beside of it. Well, I like to give them a super on top. You can force and crowd them into a comb honey super. When the flow's not strong, you might need to, but it can really bite you in the rear end 
if there's a strong flow on and they refuse and they'll go back down and they will plug out plug out that bottom now you see this extracting super here is plump full <clears throat> so hopefully they've been working here and it looks like they have so they are not done with this one yet but I'm gonna show you what we're looking at here now one side obviously feels very heavy the other side is light typically I would pull the light frames or put them to the center swap them out but I think with this one all I would do is reverse it because they're wanting to go up that one side and you can see this ain't done so I ain't got to worry about it I just damaged it right there but no big deal they're still building it it's hot you got to be careful with it as you can see pulling out nice pretty comb while I'm in here I'll reverse that since I'm already tearing it apart for you guys instead of just swapping it around I'm going to do this manipulation since this comb is mostly finished it's going to the outside this one's good and this least finished frame will go into the center now if you want to have nice pretty comb honey you got to do manipulations with it you can't just sit it and leave it uh, you got to move it around and make these bees get it the way you want it to be now this super is looking like it may be finished but the outside frame right here may not be capped but if that's the case we'll still take it because that's just west tennessee or memphis metro area rather now that's some pretty comb that's some pretty comb and we're going to pull that we're going to take that Give them a little smoke, get them on the run. Now, I don't know how I'm going to carry y'all with me, so uh, I'm going to carry this super over there, and then I will uh, come back for the camera, and y'all just have to bear with me. Now, when you tow the super, you want the frames this way. You don't want to turn it this way because when you're carrying, you'll get some slap. You'll have frame slap, and you don't want to damage these beautiful combs because, like I said, this is, this is $350 right here. So, carry it like this and don't let them combs slap one another. Well, I'm coming, I'm coming. You guys can see there. Beautiful day, just blistering hot. Little bit of wind, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. All right, guys, so we got this set right here. Now, 
I use a blower, leaf blower. I like steel to blow this the rest of the way out. Um, then they will be frozen at my shop. I'll take them back and I'll put them in the freezer for 24 hours. Uh, face your top bars towards you the way you're blowing because you don't want to cause them to fall out the backside and fall off the edge of the truck. It's fixing to get loud, guys. to hear me so <clears throat> now we have them in there guys these beautiful comb honey frames were made by skipper latrell um, he remade a, a old comb honey frame design for me and they work perfectly i really like them uh, get with skipper if you would like to purchase these uh, he's the only person that I know of making them. So now, this is where it gets a little redundant, guys. I'll just do the same, and as I come up on hives, we'll go. Um, you see this one is leave left for a bump a buffer a buffer super i don't like them to be flush on the excluder because sometimes i get pollen in them if i can avoid that that's best because um, it may look cool but it'll turn fuzzy and that's no good so we'll set this comb super back on them and they're going to get another extracting super on top of this just because we want it to be uh, on the safe side because we do have a good flow on I'm here at Witten Farms um, Jill has the most beautiful hydrangeas and flowers that I can't even name all blooming beautifully that the bees are working uh, so we got a lot going on here and, and the bees are really taking advantage of it. So I need that extra space. If I didn't have a super strong flow on, then I probably wouldn't be trying to make comb honey. Um, what happens when you try to put your comb supers on too early or trying to force them there, uh, sometimes they just destroy the foundation or they'll pull it weird or they'll take too long and they'll track it up. So speed is the name of the game with comb honey. You want comb honey finished super quickly so that it's beautiful and white and very tender. So it's just a, a great product. Oh. So these guys got pretty good work going on this box right here. And now I have an empty comb super in my truck. Uh, I need to make up some more. I'm about running out of supers, uh, comb honey supers. But uh, what I'm getting at is that if you come across a hive and they're reluctant to pull your comb honey supers out, you put them on the hives that will, the hives that do have the right balance, that are pulling comb, and you keep them pulling comb. Uh, if they're pulling comb for you, then you keep it on them. Give them foundation, give them whatever. Uh, and keep them pulling that comb for you because it can be tricky uh, keeping that momentum going even in a flow after the summer solstice um, so that's what i got to say on that guys uh, i may i got a couple more down there with some comb supers on them so they'll either get that super or they, one of these two will so i'm gonna set this to the side for now oh 
this beautiful honey, probably Vitex. The comb honey that I make here at Witten Farms is usually Vitex and it's uh, special stuff. Now I'm about to wrap up this uh, comb honey portion, but while I'm right here, I'm going to show you guys so when a, when a colony is not full, full strength, but they're healthy and they're going good and they're building up like some of these colonies that are young colonies, they'll come up and they generally work one side and they'll neglect the other. As you can see, all this frosting and beautiful fat comb right there, you'll notice this end comb, they ain't done diddly with it. Now I could pull it out the middle, but generally what I do in this case, try to catch my hive tool in that offset, work it up. Ugh. Feel like I got a frame. Yep, that always makes them upset. Not too bad there, all right. Now we we'll put this light side over here. and they'll come up and work this. But again, since I'm already in here, let's show you the difference. See this, this comb, I mean this frame of honey, it's nearly all capped, beautiful. Put this back in the center. Now this one will take a super or two, depending on how many that I have. Uh, Unfortunately, I didn't have enough room. My flatbed broke down the other day, so I'm in the in the ram and I can't put as many supers back there. So and I've already been to another yard. So these won't be getting two supers, even though I'd like to give them two supers. Uh, when you're on a strong flow like this, you can produce um, a box of honey a week. Um, it doesn't last very long, so you don't want to mess around with it. So I'll be back here next week with some more boxes because I'm starting to extract. But guys, I'm, I'm getting a little off topic here with the comb honey. Um, just wanted to show you guys some uh, techniques that I use and I hope that you got something out of it. Uh, I'm going to try to hurry up and get these supered and uh, get back in my air conditioned truck. I'll catch you guys later.